Hey folks, Dan Freer here live with Nico on the rate update. Man, that sounded corny. I'm in my backyard and my son just started a fire to keep the mosquitoes away so if it gets dark. So what we're going to talk about is the question is how much can you afford as a housing payment? So that's a big question we get all the time. I got I had one question today that somebody asked that says, you know, Dan, with the, the rates up as high as they are, how is that affecting affordability? The tough thing there is, it, it, here's, here's what I always say. I never, I never, when somebody calls in, I never work to try to get them approved at the maximum payment possible, only if they ask. Okay. The reason being is, you know, it, it, my analogy would be I, you know, I go to the car dealership and I'm like, hey, I'd like a car. And they're like, okay, let's go look at the maximum one you could qualify for. No, I don't want that. So what I always ask is, what are you comfortable or would you be comfortable paying? So that's how we walk into the affordability of, of homes. So there was a, a Invest with Steve. He's a friend of mine that we do some videos together. And he did a video today saying the average mortgage or the average person's mortgage who's going to be closing on a new construction or a new new construction uh, short soon. The average payment's going to be six hundred dollars higher than what they anticipated or with where they were pre-approved previously. So that's that's a huge piece of it. But what I want to do is I want to talk about um, what's that? That's all, Dan, real quick. That's also they just reported on MSNBC about the new rates for new people in new construction just like that. So it's not just yeah. us YouTubers. It's on national news. Oh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. So if you have a if you have a quote from your builder, you know, it's a month to if it's a week old, it's still no good. OK, that's what I would be highly if you're not using us, I would highly ask you to you know, follow up with that lender quite often to figure out what those what those rates would be. Um, so what I first want to go over with you guys is how much can I afford? Uh, let me just go over the guidelines real quick. And then as people join in, please give us a, when you come on in, let us know where you are. I won't post those. I just I like to get a count or whatever, just to see where people are coming from. And then if you would give us a thumbs up. You know, we're, 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 you guys are gracious enough to join us and uh, we're doing this. So we'd, we'd appreciate a thumbs up if you would. Uh, so let me go through the guidelines. I got to sit back because my head's getting out of the way. So I'm in my backyard. So like I said, my son's got a fire going so we can keep the mosquitoes away. Um, so how, how do you qualify or what is the qualifications uh, based on, let's say the loan product, that's probably the easiest way to break this down. And then we'll start helping you guys figure out how much you might qualify for, but we're probably going to throw you a few curveballs there. So when you're looking at a conventional loan, that's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, your first time home buyer pro programs, most of some of those, uh, or just a standard mortgage that you think of, that's not FHA, VA, USDA, Jumbo, and the other ones, you're looking at the maximum debt ratio you can have is 50%. So how do you figure out the 50%? So what you do is you take all of your debts that's on your credit report plus your proposed mortgage payment. All right. So that's that. Those are, so those are all your all your bills. Divide that by your gross monthly income. The gross income is the income before Uncle Sam takes all their money and the health insurance companies take all their money. It's that big number before you get that little amount of money at the end. So on a conventional loan, you can go 50 percent debt ratio. On an FHA, you can go up to 57. On a U, uh, VA, I've seen them as high as 60. And USDA is usually about 41. So you can see there's a huge disparity there on the debt ratio piece. For example, you know, USDA, the max is 41. VA is 60. Okay, there's a big spread there. So what I what I like to talk about is to say just... You know, it's not how much you could possibly get approved for is how much can you afford. And unfortunately, you're the only one that could figure out that piece of it. You know, what are you comfortable paying? Shoot. The only thing I want to add is also, or I guess I wanted to question you, is yeah. does everyone have the same debt to income ratios? Mm -hmm. I go to one place, am I more accept able to get more yeah. accepted than the other? Great question. I know where you're going down with this. <laughs> I hope you're going down with this. That was a good setup if you if you didn't if you didn't intend it. So here's here's how we get you approved. I'm going to make this as simple as I can. You put in your application. We pull your credit. So that gives us all the debts that we were talking about, plus your proposed mortgage payment. Then we get your pay stubs and tax returns and all that. We analyze your income. We take that data and we upload it into Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's websites. 
everybody else does the same thing. I don't care if you're going to Chase, Wells Fargo, Citibank, Guaranteed Rate, Rocket Mortgage, whomever. We all use the same system. So it, it, it doesn't matter if you got approved over here. I can get you approved for sure because oh, there's there's things called overlays and everything else. So what I'm getting at, if, if just, the opposite it, it could happen, you could get declined somewhere and we can actually get you approved. So that's so because there's things called overlays and I'm not going down that path right now because I'm not here to completely confuse you, but I know I am. So um, pitch in. You want to break into some questions? Yeah, absolutely. So okay. basically, I just wanted to get to you guys. I, mean, I wasn't trying to bait you in by how much can you afford, but the affordability is tough. So if you got any questions specifically, we'd love to answer those. But what I wanted to do is just go through the guidelines. There's disparity all over. But what I like to basically, I'll answer the question this way. How much can you afford? What are you comfortable paying? And then on our end of this equation, what we'll try to do is get you approved based on what comfort level you have in that payment. That's the easiest way for me to explain that. Yeah, and definitely something else like uh, to remember is a lot of new construction going on right now. Oh man! The whole Honestly, country. I never knew I never knew there was so much construction going on. I I, I truly didn't. In Illinois, we got like it, it, they're always working on the roads, you know, twelve yeah. months out of the year. But other than that, there's you know there's not a ton of construction here. Yeah, it's, for those that Mr. Rogers is here, right? Yeah, Mr. Rogers, come buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so real quick though, uh, people that are in the new construction phase, I've talked to so many people and their last loan estimate from their lender is when they first talked either, either could be six months ago to a year ago. And that rate is showing around, you know, who knows, for example, let's say 3.999. I know right away that that quote is old, but that's not my point. My point is guys, you saw that payment at a rate that is no longer existent. Have you checked in with your lender to see the new rate, to see your new payment? Are you yeah, even please are you do. comfortable please with do. it? Are you comfortable? That's that's what we're here for, guys. We want to make sure you guys know what's going on and where the rates are at. Yep. So uh, go ahead. Let's start, let's start shooting with the questions. And, yeah, uh, I, hey guys, thanks for thanks for joining us, everybody. I know it's a Thursday night here in Chicago. We got Mr. Rogers here as well. Cubs are playing. Nico lives a block away. The the weather is awesome. We yeah. don't have many of these, so I, I greatly appreciate you guys watching. Yeah, perfect. All right, first question, Dan. Yep. More of a question. Uh, yeah, I got the question. The economy is going to crash, Dan. The question is when? I think around September. Well, I think real quick, you got to wait for Dan's next video, correct? Yeah, it's coming out at nine. Okay, so here's let me clarify one thing. I, I have some videos coming out, and I, I even I think I even put out one today about a recession. Yes, I think there's a recession going to be basically it'll take place in the end of June. Okay, the definition of a recession is two uh, quarters of the year with negative GDP. Well, the first quarter of 2022 was a negative 1.9, and we are we have a month and a half left of the second quarter, and that ain't looking good either. So the technical definition, we're there. Then you look at the stock market and a lot of the other you know markets there. Those markets are basically, in, I mean, points away from being in a bear phase. So you got that. Today we saw, uh, well, yesterday we saw Target and Walmart earnings come out dismal. I mean, absolutely horrendous. And they're even saying that, you know, a lot of people are pulling away from purchases and only purchasing, you know, food, energy, and, and other things that they have to have. Uh, you have the jobs numbers, you have uh, continued or new job claims up um, more than thought. And the last but not least, you have wage growth that's been on a pattern for the, about the last year, every month trickling down. Uh, the yield curve also is signaling at the end of the yield curve, um, a recession. So basically, I'm saying at the end of June, we will be in or at a recession. Um, I here's my, here's my take on a lot of this stuff. I don't know about you guys, but I've lost a ton of money in the market. Uh, everything costs way too much. Gas in Illinois is about five. I think I saw five twenty. What's it down by you? You're in the city. It is almost six dollars. <laughs> that alone. I, so that I wait, alone. wait until I get out to the office in Naperville till I fill up my. <laughs> There's no way I'm going yeah. down here. Yeah, you, I, we got to talk about that. You only need to come in a couple of days a week. That gas is going to kill me. Um, but with all of just the inflate, just energy food costs, 
that alone, it's gonna it's taken a lot of money out of our pockets. You're going to see things start and they really come back down. I think the Federal Reserve is gonna do what they need to do, but they're not. The one thing I'll, I'll say here is I don't think they're acting as fast as a lot of people are wanting them to, because I think a lot of this is going to get corrected with the energy markets and people just feeling the pain. Look at your 401k statement. If you have one, it's dismal. You're, you're down probably, you know, you could possibly be down 50% on your money. Uh, so they, a lot of people are feeling that pain and they're feeling not as wealthy as they did a year ago. Um, so I'm sorry for the drawn out equation on that, but um, I, I greatly appreciate you asking the question. So hopefully I answered your question. What's the uh, next one? Yeah, I'm I'm glasses on. Just kind of a thank you. They're watching from New York, Dan. So they're thanking you for all the education and information. Oh, you betcha. Hey, we're starting to we're starting to get some loans in New York. People people calling in from New York, which is awesome. We actually I, I talked to a young lady today moving out of New York. And she's moving down to the Carolinas, and we set her up with Sir Ashley, the realtor down there, and she is good to go. She just sent us an email thanking us. So thanks to Sir Ashley, and thank you guys for watching. Awesome. What's no the next one? Yeah. No other questions just yet. Um, so I've got, I think we have to have a market story, huh? What's that? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess all of our stories right now, guys, are lock and shops or the extended locks. So. Yeah. What do we got? DC. Hold on one second. I'm going uh, share the like on that. I'm just. Oh, we I, I'm one. seeing a lot more questions. Are you going to you, you want to do those or you want to yeah, just. Just oh, came sorry. For me. I'm sorry. That's weird. Right. All right. Cool. My credit score is excellent. 835 and my debt to ratio is very low. The interest rate I'm getting right now is six percent. Although average right now is five and a half. Any advice? Also, is the arm loan has any expensive fees? One question I want to ask, when's your closing date? When's your closing date? And if, if your closing date's in 30 days and your rate's 6%, call us right away. <laughs> yeah, let us know. But there might be a reason for that. So when you when I get a lot of uh, estimates for qu quotes back, and I get a lot. This is a, one of the biggest questions. I actually, actually haven't had it even today. Um, you know, the, the piece of your rate is, you know, 6% could be actually a good rate today if – you know, and I'll say if or depending on the biggest piece of your rate is this. The better your credit score, the better your debt ratio. I'll say I hate to say it this way. Let's throw that out the door. That's so basically it's, we've got one piece of the puzzle so far. So what we're looking at what we need from you is how much the house, uh, the value of the home is. Um, what the loan amount is or how much you're putting as a down payment uh, and what kind of property is it? Is it a single family home, a two unit, a four unit? Are you going to live there as your primary home? Uh, there's a lot of factors involved there, but if you want to po you can post that here and we can answer your question live if you want, or you're more than welcome to email us down below. Um, our emails will be popping up. If, Nico, if you could pop up the banner for the, the emails, that'd be awesome. You can email me or Nico and we'd love to get back with you and just say, you know, here's what we got. Um, but you know, just here's what I always ask too. When you send in, when you, when you're getting a quote for a rate, please also, I'm sorry, it's starting to get dark here. Please also make sure you look at page two of the loan estimate. Okay. The loan estimate is, is basically a three page document. Look at the two first two pages, the rest of the whole pad 90 package deal. Put that aside for a second. Okay. Look at that loan estimate pages one and two page. One's going to give you the rate, the term, all the stuff. And it's also going to tell you if you're locked in and how long that lock is good for page two top left is the main primary area. I want you to focus in on uh, it is section a, and it is basically the lender fees, any fees. You're, are you paying points, underwriting fees, processing fees, doc prep fees, this, the, they might say, well, we're not charging you points, but there might be a lot of other BS fees fees in there that are just getting slid in and they're like, oh, that's just our customary charge. And there's there's $5,000 worth of customary charges. Run, find something else. Uh, but again, you you we might get back with you and say, hey, that's a pretty darn good rate based on the situation. Okay. For sure. Um, cool. All right. Uh, we got we got to give our Mr. Rogers a little love with Go Cubs, man. Right, Dan? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you are on here. You uh, you got to email me and just we got to talk. I, I want to know who you are. Well, if you want, <laughs> I mean, I just, I'd like to know who you are. You're in Chicago. You're on here every time I do something. So I I, I appreciate it. I truly do. Martha, I almost right. skipped. Yeah, I did not mean that. 
So he's just asking, is it a good time to buy a house or wait till the crash to balance it up? Markets bail it up, I feel. That, that's the number one question. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Here's the, here's the best way I'll put it. If, and I talked to several people today. I'm like, if you're not going to be there at least three years, don't buy. Do not buy. I'm not FOMOing buying. I'm not, don't buy. OK, but if you're going to be there five years or more and I know we don't know what tomorrow's brings, we don't even we're not even guaranteed to wake up tomorrow. But even if even if the market does OK, if you're in, in and out in three years, you're you're probably going to lose money or maybe break even because of all the transaction fees and where you are. Once you get over five years, three to five years, say five years and eight years, now you're okay. So what, and what I mean by that is if we see a correction in the market, my thing is, and you're going to see a lot of stuff that I'm coming out with saying, we're going to get in a recession, okay? But there is, you got to think of it this way. For every house that was on the market and somebody put a bid on, there was 30 to 40 to 50 bids. I was just on a YouTube video the other day, and one of the realtors said that they're, they just had a client... Uh, they, they finally just wanted to buy a house, so they bid a hundred thousand over asking, and they got it. Well, what did you think? You know, they, the bid was two hundred; they bid three hundred. That's absurd. Um, but I, I am not a proponent of that. But again, what I'm saying is, let's say you go in and buy, and where we are now is you have the 30, 40 buy, buyers all bidding on that same house. The normal market, you're going to have two or three, five, maybe. That's where we're going to get to. So we won't see the 18, 20 percent, 30, 40 percent appreciation in areas. We should get back to three, four, five percent. That's the norm through history. It's actually 7.5. And that, just to add on to that, because Martha, again, she's if you estimated how much our housing is going to crash, 25, 50 to 100,000. The reason I wanted to ask you this, Dan, is because yeah. we just talked about this before we start. So go ahead. About yeah. how, how, you, do you think how pro, home prices are going to crash? No, I, no. I mean, even let's, I don't say, you know, there's a whole big difference between crash and correct. Okay. So if you look at a timeline for a 10 year history and you go above that timeline, you're going to see markets where people bought up here and then they came back here. But still, if you look at about an eight to 10 year average, you you're never going negative. I don't think, and I, I, I might be going on a limb here. Don't, I'm not quoting this for for stone, but I'm almost positive it's never happened. Where you bought a house and ten years later it's undervalued, even at the great recession that we had. My house actually went down like fifty percent, and now I'm 20, 30, 40 percent over what I paid. So I paid here, it went down almost fifty percent in the recession, and now I'm twenty five percent higher from what I bought. Think about it. Okay, so again. If you buy here, you know, you're we're in the cycle when you buy here and it corrects down 10 percent. Yeah, you, you, you got corrected 10 percent. But three, four, five years later, it's going to go back up. And again, I'm not FOMOing homes by no means. I'm just I'm answering the questions and that, you know, just look at look. I try to give all the data, the charts and everything I possibly can just to back up my arguments instead of coming on here saying, uh, you know, the market's going to completely crash or, you know, house values are here. I try to use historic values. You should see my office. I got three computer screens up and I'm doing this all day long. I love it. And that's why I figured I'd share it with you guys. So hopefully I, I start my, my, your eight word question goes into a 15 minute dissertation, but I'm, I'm my apologies. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, this is your guy, Dan. Uh, is it? <laughs> Dude, you, you're on here all the time too. So yeah. thank you. All right. He said, bro, the Euro, Euro dollar is predicting negative interest rates next year. I think the monkey pox may be the catalyst to bring down the entire market. The monkey pox. Actually, I just, I, I just saw that uh, today, Dan. Um, it's a new uh, virus that's out right now. It's oh, God. I'm, I'm so tired of it. <laughs> yeah. It's literally called monkey pox. Yeah. I, yeah, I won't even get in. I'm not going to get into the politics or the the, the coronas and all that stuff because I'll get booted off of YouTube. I, po I apologize. I'd love to answer your question, uh, but I'm, I'm going to stay away from the politics and the, the stock markets and all that stuff. Perfect. All right. Cool, Dan. From Dennis, is the recession going to mean a lower rate? And, and I'll answer in two ways. And it's, a, it's I'm not saying it's a cop out. 
we've never been in this situation. OK, we've never been in a complete lockdown where the Federal Reserve uh, took the federal fund rate to zero. The government sent out five point eight trillion dollars in stimulus money and blah, 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 blah. That being said, every other recession that we've ever had throughout history, we've seen between a one and a one and a half uh, percent drop in interest rates. I'm not saying that's going to happen either. I think this recession is basically just going to be a like a, you know, how you smack the side of a jukebox. I don't even know if you guys know what a jukebox is, but yeah, the side of a jukebox when it's skipping and you, you get it back on track, this is what's happening. I think we all need to smack upside the head. I've spent more, I spent more money last year than I should have on just crap going out to dinners and doing all this stuff every other weekend and whatever. I way overspent. I'm sure you guys did too. So we all need to go back and say, okay, but I think the gas piece of the puzzle is really going to get, you know, make all of us tighten up our butt belts. So I don't think we're going to really see a huge, um, we'll talk housing, drop in housing and everything else, but I do think you're going to see mortgage rates stabilize, maybe even start, I think they'll stabilize right here. And then the Federal Reserve is going to watch things because I think we're going to be surprised in a new in a couple more readings uh, on inflation where we're going to start seeing some of those go down. We see lumber prices almost down 50%. So there's a lot of stuff really to, you know, getting hammered right now. Awesome. All right. Uh, Radha V. Realtor offers credit of part of his or her commission received from the seller. Where can, I'm sorry, where can this be legally documented or adjusted of this amount towards closing costs? It's a, just a ledger entry at the, on the, at the title company as a, as a credit. So just get a hold of your, probably just your, your attorney should be able to handle that for you or, or, or your realtor or somebody, your, your loan officer. We'll be able to handle that for you. Yeah, it's and just going to be an, it's going to be an extra yeah. doc. Yeah, hopefully, awesome. hopefully we're your lender. If not, call us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, I think. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think I got that. No, um, just recession mean lower rates. I'm worried. I think we did answer that, right, Dan? Yes, we did. All right, cool. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to appeal your property taxes when the economy crashes. Your home value will go flying down. Hold on, though. So here's how this works in most areas. Well, at least it's how it's supposed to work. It's like gas prices, and I'll leave that. So the house, your house taxes or the assessment, well, I won't say this in all parts of the country because, uh, for example, like California, as soon as you buy, they adjust your taxes accordingly. I know in Illinois, our tax, our, our real estate taxes are based on values of homes three years ago, which is kind of crazy. But that's where you, I'm hoping my, my don't skyrocket because um, values here have, have gone up some. Um, but I, yeah, I would have to agree with him. And because I'm in a lot of areas, you you people that are buying up here, but you know, don't protest that until it's below what you what they think it's worth. Okay. So don't don't try to protest it and then they'll then pull up some data and say, you know what? Actually, the house across the street from you just sold for hundred grand more than yours. Hmm, we're gonna have to relook at this. So yeah. it's like it's like messing with the IRS. And also there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, uh homeowner credits you guys can look into with your state and county that they give out. Yeah. Oh, and you should get, yeah. yeah, check your when you guys when you when you get a tax bill or you can even go to the the county's assessors, go and make sure that you're getting your home uh homeowners exemption uh for for the house um because you get tax credits and stuff like that if if you live there. So it's basically it's your primary home tax exemptions. All right. Um Bebo, I did I miss a message? Bonus nine hundred thousand. Is that the eight hundred and thirty credit score? Remember, somebody was wanting to know if their rate at six something, six percent was was a good rate. This is like the first message. Okay, yes, it is. You're right. What, okay, right. The, so the loan. What's the value? The value of the house. We need the value of the house and the uh, um, how much how much money you're going to put down, yeah. or the it, loan it, amount it, that you need, and what kind of property it is. Cool. Good catch, Dan. I was I was very confused there. All right. I mean, hey guys, I'll be fifty-seven a month in a couple days from now. <laughs> All right, cool. What is the standard fee that I accept, accept and be okay? Are we asking about mortgage and lender fees? Probably so, right, Dan? Yeah. So 
It depends. I mean, it, it's very hard in this market to do zero. And, you know, being competitive last year, a lot of people just said, okay, we just, we just, we'll just get your loan because it was an assembly line last year. Uh, so you just, you just grabbed the loan and you just went like this. Now, it, you know, it, you're working on the deals and, and this how, you know, unfortunately you guys, I'll, I'll be blunt, this is how we make a living. A lot of that section, we don't get any of it. Um, but there's usually, you're going to usually have a processing fee. It could range, you know, it shouldn't be more than like 12, 1300 bucks. I'll put it that way. I'll lump it all in. If you got zero, God bless you. But it's it's in there. It's worked in somehow, some way. Uh, but you should it should be about twelve hundred bucks on just the the lenders pieces of the the equation. Cool. All right, from realtor, realtor. All right. Do you see now? QM mortgage will be a rise this year. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this this is concerning. Um, I got an email and I didn't open it yet. I just got it right before we went on. Nico, you might have got it. It says no income, no assets, no problem, or something like that. No, no income, no job, no problem, or something like that. I, I hope to God that all that junk doesn't come back. Um, you know, it, when when lenders get um, slow, they try to innovate like what they did back in 2000 when they were like, everybody needs to own a house. I'm not the proponent of everybody needs to own a house. Um, it, it, um, too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, so here's what I'll say. I, I can definitely see a little bit potential rise in them, but I'll also say a lot of the QM lenders out there in the country have closed shop already. Yeah, there. But but I'll, I'll I'll take that back. There are some fantastic programs like the DSCR. The DSCR yeah. is a, if you're an investor, it's a debt service coverage ratio. So let's say I own 10, 12 different properties. They all cash flow. Okay. If you ever looked at somebody's tax returns who has multiple rental properties, it's tough because every one of them is like its own little mini business. So you can do, you do a profit and loss statement on every property. Most of the time, because of the tax deductions you get be between depreciation and everything else, you have a negative. But we can add that back when you're trying to get a mortgage. But it's still, it, it's really hard the more and more and more properties that you own. There's a dog barking behind me. Is that messing you guys up? Um, okay. Uh, so right. there's, a D, there's a DSCR program out there. If, if you, anybody's interested in, it's basically you buy an investment property. If you're an investor, you got to put normally 15, 20% down at least. So you got skin in the game. And as long as the, the payment on the, that is received on the appraisal, when we have the appraisal done, because what will happen, the appraiser will, will do a rental analysis. As long as the rents received on that property equals your payment, you're okay. I'm okay with that. Because it's a cash flow thing. And you're putting, you know, in most cases, 20% down. Where I got a problem is when you go back to these loans that you don't qualify anybody and they're just liar loans. And it's it's a detriment to all of us. I don't like them. I don't want them. And that this is how I make a living. But I'm not going to make a living on, you know, on those programs because they are a detriment to our whole society, truly. For sure. Okay. Nora McGinty. With the recession, will home prices go back to normal? Yeah. Yes. And I'm again, I'm not saying they're crashing. You know, I'm not saying I, I'm not a proponent of the houses are crashing because there are tons of people still looking to buy. Now, will I change my opinion if rates hit eight? You betcha. But awesome. if we stay below six, it, you know, in normal market, you you know, normal rates throughout history. And, you know, unfortunately, I don't know, Nico, you said last last week you were you've been doing this for quite a quite a long time. And you've never yeah. seen rates this high. No, it's the first time. Yeah. So that I, you're you're probably the, you know, you're a good norm out there that you know this is that's why I think a lot of people are freaking out. But once you get people 50 and older, there's a lot of us, we're like, okay, the rates five and a half. Okay. You know, it, it would have been great to get two, but sure. I didn't, but so it doesn't freak me out, but it's crazy when you have, you know, people that are just like, you know, the world's going to end if rates hit 5.75. Well, we heard that if rates hit four, the world's going to blow up. Well, now they're basically at six and we still have a robust housing market. So where did all those people go? Definitely. All right, cool. We locked in at 4% in March with the new home build to be completed this month. The builder got wrong flooring and it was delayed closing. 
and we will ne- we will be now oh. with a new current raid builder. Oh, Pan- isn't that lovely? <laughs> we will now be with the new. Oh, okay. I am being sarcastic. I'm being completely sorry. I feel bad for you, but that's maybe why you should be careful with some thing. And I'm not blaming you. you. You're doing everything you can. I would go back to that, that builder. Um, and I'll, I'll ask this question and I'm, I almost guarantee I know the answer is, and this is why I'm going to strive to, this will be my goal for the next month or so. Um, have you, did you have an attorney review your, your package when you signed? And at the time you pray, and I, I get it. It's, you want to buy the house. You're like, Hey, it's just standard documents. I'm just going to sign everybody else is signing. Gosh, darn, man. These contracts are so weighed to the builder that it is ridiculous. Like in this case, you should have the ability to go back and say, Hey, you screwed up. You know, I, I want to close on my own. You know, you just cost me an extra 500 bucks a month, a month for your screw up. And the thing to think about too is that was probably the builder's lender. And we've talked to some of these builder lenders, guys. Let me tell you, I get paid. I get paid when I close on your loan. Yeah. I tell people, I tell realtors that. I'm like, I make money like you do. When your loan closes, we make money. We we spend our time and efforts on you all the way up to that point. We don't make a paycheck. We I don't get a salary. I run the place. Nico yeah, gets, yeah. you know, everything's 100% basically commission. That's how we work on, on the volume of business that we do. We want you to close. We will work our butts off. Yeah, but I do want to say this, uh, Lillian. Your, your lender should have been able to at least offer you an extension, but unless the flooring is just going to take months and months and months and months, um, that's the only thing I can I can say. You know, if it's going to take an extra 30 or 40 or 60 days, ask them how much it would cost in paying points or, or whatever or and see if the, the see if the builder will pay your points down so you can get the rate that you had previously. That's what I would suggest. For sure. All right, King of the Mortar. Uh, how expensive is it extend the rate after the rate lock expires? Just an estimate. I have my rate lock until October, but the house might might, might not be done until November. One thing is, do not do not let your rate expire. Please. He is dead on. That's what I was hoping you were going to say. Please. Good job. Go ahead, Dan. I'll let you finish. Once it expires, you're done. You're out. You're out of the game. You got to start all over. But you don't have to start all over. Your rate's null and void. You have to take what the current market is. What's what you want to do prior to that is ask for an extension, like we were just mentioning on the last the prior comment. Is you ask for an extension? Yes, it'll cost you some money. Again, I would go back to the builder and say, hey, you know, on this, I'm sure everybody and their mother's asking the builder for all these concessions right now because I, I'm still looking into this. I don't know how many people are going to start walking away. Uh, from the properties, or let's just say you don't qualify anymore. Well, come next December, how robust is the market going to be? So now some a buyer might be able to come in there and get it cheaper than you would have. Um, so that, it's a slippery slope. But I mean, I mean, we're hearing this over and over and over. And the builder and the builders, lenders, they're usually in cahoots. I'm not saying that I don't want to get in legal problems, but normally if you look into it, the builder usually owns 49% of the, the lenders, uh, the, the lender that you're going through in many cases. And I can prove it if need be. And most, most cases, guys, you're signing a document that says that. And you guys yeah. probably, you know, I mean, you probably don't even know we're, we're an affiliate. We have an affiliate relationship with all these parties below. This one is 48%. This one, it's in a, in a, it's in a paragraph that big that you wouldn't even, you'd be like, Oh, that's just a bunch of gibberish, and, but it's there. It would probably take me five minutes to find yeah, it. I would, dude, I wouldn't even catch it. <laughs> so I just catch it because I'm help, trying to help you guys. Right, sir. That's it just right now, Dan. How, what's but that? Guys, we're here, guys. If, please an, ask us any questions. If you got a new home, new build, refi, anything. Oh, I, I got. I'm showing more. I think. Are you? I, my, yeah. my computer might be slow. Then, man. Let's go to Bebo. It, I'll, I'll ask you, and then I'll fill in the blanks. If if you if you get stumped, I'm not trying to stump you. What Perfect. do you think? If I get an arm loan, I have to pay a lot of fees. So, are there a lot of fees with an arm loan? Most most of the time, standard days, no. Right now, 
we work with over 150 lenders. I can't find one lender that doesn't have a cost with an arm rate right yeah. now. It's, it's, not. it's like they don't I, want them. It doesn't make sense really, but right now, yes, there's high cost involved arms. Standard days, no, right, Dan? Yeah. The, no, normally, yes, you can get an arm. Oh, well, in the past 10, 15 years, nobody got an arm. I think I did do two for some of my neighbors who were just on the brink of retiring. And they're like, I just, I'm in three years, I'm retired. I already have my second home down in Florida. I'm gone. So I'll just take the arm. It was a little bit less. And they, that's what they did. They did it, got it, didn't moved. They're gone. Um, yeah. But now they're starting to become prevalent again, but the spreads are still not where I want them to be. Um, Cause I always say to you guys, here's what I would personally do. I would never take a, you know, I, I wouldn't take a five-year arm. The least amount of time I would take is a seven-year arm. That's me personally, or a 10-year uh, usually the seven right now is a sweet spot. It's better than the five anyways. So that's what I would do. But I would also analyze, you know, what's the differentials? What's the risk behind it? You know, which, you know, is it your first home? Is it your final home or whatever? There's a lot, there's a lot of decisions to make in that, believe it or not. Yeah. And the reason I ask you about arms is like I said, I, I joined the business 10 years ago. So just this year is when arms have started taking a, a role, a predominant role, I guess, and barely just a little bit. Let's but see. Dana, I got sorry. another. One. Yeah, I'm you saying. I don't see. Here, I got to. I got to put my glasses on. Let me. I got. I got some on my end. House value. Okay, I'm starting to lose trend of what's what. My bad. We got that. We got that. Uh, I don't think we got this one. Oh, is that you? Wait, hold on. I got. I got to click one. Sorry. There, there is a government first time home buyer program for twenty five thousand, but a second lien of twenty five thousand with. Will that raise my interest rate? You may take it. No, I can take it. So we got okay. to know a little bit more. If you want to send us the documents, because you're probably have already looked at them, you got to let us know. Each grant, there's hundreds of thousands of grant programs throughout the United States. Each one has a different guideline. So it's a little too hard to say, but I will tell you, most of them do have liens. So yes, if you're getting $25,000 as a grant, there's most likely a $25,000 lien on your property for five to seven years. Okay. I think, I think you misunderstood the question. Did Here, I? I'll, I'll grab it. So she's saying she's getting a $25,000, a second lien as a grant for the down payment. And will that raise your, my interest rate? It probably will because what, what your interest rates is based off of is what I was saying before. It's your credit score, your loan to value. Okay, so that's the section that, that, that this will affect. The loan to value is all the liens against the property divided by the property value. So you're, you're getting a $25,000 second lien that then you add on the first lien in front of that. So your lender, most lenders do have a, the, it, uh, it's called the CLTV, the combined loan to value. They, they might have a combined loan to value hit uh, on the rate, what I mean by adjustment to the rate. So you might, most likely you're going to have a little bit higher rate because of that second lien. But that was a, that was a great question. Um, I, I did look into, I don't know. I would love to know where you are, Martha, where you, where you're getting that, uh, $25,000, uh, first time home buyer grant, because there there's thousands and thousands of them. I did. The last one I heard of was a California one for like $25,000. And I called out there and the program just doesn't make any sense. You know, you can't make more than $64,000 to qualify in in the county the normal the normal home value was 773. You, you wouldn't be able to buy a $773,000 home if you made 60 grand. Nothing against 60 grand, but that that's one hefty payment. Um so I but I would love to find out uh, some of the the intricates behind all of that if you don't mind. Let's see. You want to to live happily, Section Eight. You know, Mister Rogers, you're you're probably right. If you get a good property manager that can handle that, you're guaranteed that check every month. Uh, so on the Section Eight, what do you, we mean by Section Eight? That's government housing. And if you rent, if you get a property, you know, go go out to government housing. If you're having a, you probably aren't having a tough time renting a home, but you can go out to the government uh, housing and they'll come and assess your house and do all this other stuff. He probably, Mr. Rogers, I'd love to maybe do a video with you if you want talking about investment properties and such, but um, 
yeah, Section 8 is basically the government pays you the monthly rent. So it is on time like clockwork. There's more here. House value is... I forget what that question is, though. House value is 900. My Wait, the house value is 900. My loan is 900. That's the one we got I, before, Daniel. Okay. that Well, you can't have a loan amount of 900 and a value of 900 with 5% down. Um, you know, Bebo, if you don't mind, if you could please email me or Nico, and our emails are right down below. Um, I'd love to do, I'll, I'll work on that first thing in the morning and I can shoot you an email back telling you where we would be. And I just, you gave me most of the stuff. I just need the, the state you're in, your score, credit scores, the house value. I already know the 5% down. Um, and the reason being is the zip code, because I can check and see if you're in a high, a high balance area that it would allow the 5%. Uh, so, but you got it approved. So I'll, I'll, I promise you, I'll dig into that and let you know what we can do or send me your loan estimate. And I can I can get all the information off of there, but thanks for the post, man. That would be terrible. What do you think? Here, let me go. This. No, we answered that. That might be it. Oh, we yeah. got. Oh, go down, go down to the bottom right where the arrow is. Click it. It'll it should update. Did it update? Uh, give me a sec. No sir. <laughs> okay, I'll keep clicking. Paying points or more of down payment. I wouldn't do either. I mean, right now, the, here, here's here's the toughest thing there. If you would go to our website, now that's the best way I can put it. And in there, hit the mortgage calculator and put in what your loan amount is and then start adjusting your loan amount. Um, you'd be amazed how little your payment changes with the amount of money you put down. That, that's why I usually, um, when I bought my house, I had a chunk of money to put down because I sold another property. But when I bought my first house, I didn't have, I really had nothing. And, um, but I, I wouldn't, I would rather, especially in this stage of the economy, I would keep as much cash, cash as I possibly can at this time. Cool. All right, Dan, I got it to work. I just had to zoom out, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Are you seeing more arms versus conventional loan applications these days? No. Dan, I'll take this. Oh, you yeah. take that one. Yeah. yeah you, you get, he gets most of the apps. No, again, just kind of like we said, a couple comments or questions before. Right now, the ARM interest rates, there's easily a point cost up front just to get the rate. And the rate, some of the times, is just the same as the fix, maybe a half a point better. So it just doesn't make sense right now to do fixed rates. So we're literally, we're, we're telling people to avoid them right now. Yeah. And again, if- we're, we're doing loans we would put you into. And that's what I'm trying to instill in all the guys at the office, too. I can say guys because they're all they are we are all guys. We unfortunately we don't have any women in there. There's just four, like five or six of us. And we have a great time and we do fantastic. So thanks to you guys. Um, so I didn't mean the guy thing, but whatever. But yeah, the arm rates. If you guys watch me every morning, you're gonna see where I show you know mortgage news dailies. And we have over 130 lenders that we scan throughout the whole country. I can never find that rate, and that's the average rate that they're showing. So I don't know how and where they're getting it from. But our rates are normally a quarter to three eighths lower on the arms than the fixed. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't even recommend it to you. Yeah, most of the time, like I said, I'll show you guys if you reach out to me. I'll show you what they look like because I want to show you guys all your options. But I'll tell you on there. I, I used, remember. I used, remember, I used to do rate to rate matched or rate something Tuesdays or something like that. Yeah, now I would actually yeah. go into our search engine and I would scan the systems and show you guys how we scan the whole country uh, on, on checking rates throughout the whole country. I'll, I'll put a video together on that. It's just tough on my end. Cause I got to blur out all the lenders names for privacy purposes, but it's, it's crazy how you put in one criteria, meaning here's the loan amount, here's this, and you scan over 150 lenders and every one the, the rate is just a little different. Um, and it's, it's nuts, but that's, that's how we can make, you know, be of benefit to you guys. Cause we can scan basically the entire country for you on your behalf with, you know, one, one application and one credit pool. All right. This is kind of an add on from an earlier question. They were asking earlier, you know, uh, what if their agent gives them a, you know, an agent credit once they're going closing. So in their comment, they're saying, um, which document shows the information of the realtor credit other than an oral commitment from the realtor. Should the realtor say this in an additional agreement? So I'll, I'll take the stand if you don't mind. Just last month with the builder, it might have been a couple of weeks ago. 
Um, the client reached out to me and said, Nico, uh, the realtor said he was giving me 1% of his commission back. And I said, oh, I didn't see that on the real estate contract. So technically, I wasn't able to add it to the file yet. So I reached out to the agent. He said, yes, this was correct. So the, um, the agent was able to provide me with the document signed by the agent and the client telling how much of a credit was. Once I got that, I was able to get it into underwriting. We got that credit added. But if it's not added on a document right now and your lender doesn't have it, it's not going to be accounted for. Yeah, be careful. But that's, I would reach out to your loan officer and your realtor. They they should be they should be able to give you this much information on a one-on-one -on -one basis for you. That, and that, but that's why we do this. So you guys can ask us, but you know, shame on your, your lender for not being able to provide you that information. Sure. And if we're the lender, shame on Nico. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, go ahead. All right, cool. Do not realize my daughter changed her name. Would you be able to help us regarding the builder's mistake on the floors? That will cause us to lose four percent lock flooring. All right, hold on, I'm gonna reread that a couple well, times. The flooring is supposed to be there arrive in three to four weeks. So, did you, what, what I would ask you is, daughter changed our name. Would you be able to help us regarding the builder's mistake on the floors that will cause to lose? Yeah, we'd love to help you. Uh, and also, if it's a government-backed loan like USDA VA or uh, V. Uh, FHA, we can use that appraisal that's already done no matter what. If it's a conventional loan, we can still use it if you've, if you've paid for it. So and then we just, they, they're obligated to transfer that appraisal to us. So we can actually get you through underwriting like that. Um, and, you know, it, you got three to four weeks until the, the flooring gets, flooring is expected to arrive. And then you're probably going to have another three to four weeks for it to be installed. So you might be about two months out. Um, and also, you, you kind of like what you were we were speaking about earlier. You mm -hmm. should check in with your lender what those extensions are going to cost you. Well, from my understanding, the way we read it, it's that it, it, they blew the lock. So if you blew the lock and you're starting all over, you know, we would love to help you because uh, gotcha. they you've already got you know the short end of the stick well, where you were. I wouldn't continue to stay with them. And like we just said earlier, we, this is how we make money. I mean, they 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 didn't do what they were supposed to do for you. Uh, so, you know, otherwise I'd be like, you know, they put all this time into it, you know, just stay there. But I mean, they didn't do what they should have done for you is the way I'd put it. Uh, just a little thank you. Uh, thanks yep, yep, yep. And for educating. Appreciate you both. Cool. 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 So if you got any more questions, if you guys would, please, before you leave, give us a thumbs up. That's all we ask of you. Uh, that helps the algorithms, helps, uh, helps us get found more through YouTube, uh, because without you guys helping, you know, push this out there, you know, we, we would basically be a flop. The cool thing is we're starting to get a lot of realtors calling us now uh, looking for our realtor for referral program. So what we do is like I met Sir Astley not too long ago. He's in the Carolinas. We've already referred him several deals. He's referred us several deals. We have people in Florida, uh, Arizona, Texas, but we'd love to hear from you guys. So if you're a realtor out there and looking, I know you got buyers, you know, I know you got buyers, but if we get a, we get a buyer on our end, we're not asking for anything from you guys. What we want to do is just a network with people all over the country through YouTube and other social media that when, when we do get a qualified borrower, we can actually get, at least get them in touch with somebody who we know and we've vetted and we know you, you have their best interests in mind. So that's what, that's what we're looking for as well. So if you, you can even email one of us down below, preferably Nico, if you could, uh, I do it as well. We'll put you in that database. And when the file, when a loan comes, I can't promise you we'll even get one, but I, I can promise you this. If we do get one in your area, uh, be expecting a phone call from me. Awesome. So that is it for today. Um, if you guys have any other questions, please leave it down below. If not, we are on here within, oh, we got one. <laughs> what's, what, what's this one? I'm here from Sir's video. Really appreciate the great info. Hey, thanks. Thanks for joining. And, uh, and yeah. Sir, actually, yeah. he's, he's a good dude. And I just, I hooked up with uh, Steve, invest in Steve. He's down in Southwestern Florida. He's a cool guy. Uh, Scott Walters out in California. And I'm starting to meet a lot of YouTubers and a lot of realtors in this platform. So that's awesome. If, you, if you're out there and you're a YouTuber and have a platform, love to hear from you. Uh, I got a special guest coming next week. That I think you guys will be surprised. It's a, it's a guy I follow. Never even thought he'd return my email and he did today. So kind of, that was kind of cool. That was the highlight of my day. And you, I'll, get, I'll let you guys meet him next week sometime. Awesome. But other than that, is that it? 
Just one more, Dan. Yes, sir. What yes. Rules around closing remotely. Uh, say closing day got chosen, but you're out of country. Can you close with the POA? Yeah. Yes. Check with your lender, though. Yeah, the, you, it has to be approved. The verbiage and the power of attorney documents have to be approved by the lender and the title company. So make sure you get all that prepared before you go and you got it, you get it cleared. Otherwise, if you don't, you probably won't close. Um, so just make sure to reach out to your lender or your broker or whomever and just tell them, you know, we need a power of attorney. Hopefully the lender will allow it. They usually do. Um, but sometimes back in year, years ago, they wouldn't. Today, it's a little more prevalent. There's a, there was a lot of fraud in the POA closings uh, in history. So that's why a lot of lenders are, are kind of reluctant to do that. That's the reasoning behind it. Yeah, and just let your lender know. Don't be in the dark about it, for sure. All right, next question, Dan. One more quick question. What's the typical down payment percentage these days? We have options from three to three and a half to five percent down. Yeah, between three and five. I, I we had we did get one today. Alan, Alan was speaking with a client today, and it was a it was a unique program. And I'm like, well, what loan to value do you need? And he's like sixty. So that means the people were putting forty percent down. That's an anomaly these days. I yeah. actually I, I thought it would be kind of the somewhat of a norm because like I, I put a video out the other day. You know, I was even contemplating selling my house um, and just like, I mean, because if I can sell it all the way up here, but where am I going to go? I mean, it, what I always preach too is housing, housing, housing. Well, where am I going to live? You know, so I'm living here and I love it. So That's, is that it? It's a little correct. Oh, here they come. Keep uh, asking, guys. We can say, I have no problems staying here. I'm in my backyard. If it gets a little too dark, I'll, I got a little thing here that whatever. Yeah. So, okay. I think Tom, you're saying three to only 5% down. Here's the thing. Mortgage interest rates are going to be set by a few things. How much you're putting down your loan to value credit score type of property, right? That's yeah. income. But like we said, we're not going to get into that. Yeah. Tom's saying though, he, he's putting down 20%. God bless you, brother. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's awesome. And then the good thing there is you, you avoid PMI and you probably get a better rate. It, that's what I, that's what I normally do. Would I when I buy a house, I always say, you know, I like to hoard my cash. I've always put down twenty percent, you know, other than my first house. Uh, but I use that money. But I I never I really never come in with more than that. Even when I had it, other than this house. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. No, that's it. I mean, people were that you you Tom. You'd be amazed at how it's hard for people to save these days. And you know, God oh. bless you for what you did. But, you know, I, I talked to a young lady in New York today between rent, a car payment, student loans, and that's half her paycheck. You know, well, and then the government takes 30 percent, 40 percent. So you got this little minuscule to work with. And then you got gas and food and utilities, everything else. It's hard to save. You know, the, and I'll say this now, and I've been saying it all along. I think the next bubble is the student loan thing. And I'm completely against the forgiveness. So if I, if you're, I ticked you off because I said that. So be it. But I, you know, you you elected to go to school. You elected to do what you did. You took did your choices. I paid for all my kids' college, and I don't regret it. But I don't think you should be able to go to school and make all those choices on your own for free, and then have me pay for it. So there's nothing not a wrong. Political with, channel. Not, <laughs> huh? Nothing wrong with putting down three percent. My cousin and I put three percent down here, right in Wrigleyville, a block away from where the Cubs play. Within a year and a half, we dropped our mortgage insurance. So we have Bam. over percent equity so there's nothing wrong with putting down less money it's just where are you at and where's the market good call all right and here here take that a little more step well if rates haven't gone up so much a lot of people would have been able to go in and refinance let's say the rate stayed stagnant for yeah. a, another year or so a lot of people had that equity in their house because house values went up 18 to 20 percent you could you could have refinanced and dropped your pmi in most cases that's 200 bucks, 250 bucks. That's a lot exactly of money a month. That's exactly what we did. All right. One more for you, Dan. Do rent payments count towards debt to income ratios? No. No, sir. So all, only thing in debt to income ratios, it's going to be your current monthly debts. And when I say current monthly debt stuff, it's going to be reported to your credit report. So credit cards, student loans, um, car payments, not your T-Mobile bill. Um, not your rent payments, not your gas bill. 
Right. I got into a debate last night with Patrick. He kept wanting to know why. And I'm like, dude, it's just the rules. <laughs> so yeah. I, we don't make the rules. It's like, why is it? You know, my comeback always is like, why is the speed limit 60 or whatever it is in that area? I don't know. It is what it is. I don't make the rules. I just have to abide by them and teach you guys what they are. Okay. So that being said, on and off and on, in and in and out of this in an hour, that is awesome. And I, you know, my biggest fear every week coming on here is, you know, is anybody going to show up and you guys are helping uh, make this actually a success. So I greatly appreciate you guys, especially on a, on a, on a summer night at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, five o'clock, wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching uh, and, and being a factor of this. So we got, I think we got one more, one more. How much does credit age factor in the equation? I think it's about I think it's 15. I don't know the exact rate. It's around 15 to 20% of your uh, credit score. So the, the best, I, I actually created a website. If you got, before we go, if you guys want to check that out or when you're done, go to credit scores. It's plural credit scores and more.com. It's not an elaborate site. I made it myself, but there's, there's two steps. To, there are actually three steps that you might want to look at. Number one is the free credit scoring system. It uses, I think I'm set up with, I have it set up with credit karma or credit Sesame use it don't but don't i'll plead don't buy any of the bullshit <laughs> excuse my friend hope twitter doesn't or whoever doesn't take me up don't buy any of the perks that they want you you know upgrade your sit just take the free stuff it's good enough um and then if you want your real credit score it's called your fico score that's what all lenders credit card companies insurance companies that's what everybody uses that's number two um and then number three is now where you can have your rent added to your credit report and they're saying that uh, i haven't checked it out yet i just got i just found it recently and i added it to the website just about two weeks ago they're saying you should be able to see a up to a 40 percent bump in your scores within 30 days just rent because report. of that rent yes reports. yes yep it's good stuff all right one yep. more um and i'm gonna need your help on this one just because Yep. I still have been searching the area for this one. What yep. about the doctor's mortgage? Those are typically considered high income earners, but they're buried in student loans. Can you really do zero yep. percent down? Yeah, I I think there's a couple lenders out there. I haven't got I haven't gotten one with zero percent down. So Tom, I'd love to if you want to email me. Um, our email that could be down below. Email me tomorrow. I know you. We, none of your student loan debt is counted in your debt ratio uh, because we know you're you're buried in debt. The zero percent down. I'm pretty sure that is the case, and you have no PMI. But I I haven't done one yet with no money down. So please, if you would email me, I I'll find you. I promise you, I'll find you the answer tomorrow, and, and get back with you as quick as I can. All right, another one, Dan from David Henderson. I'm looking at a duplex investment. How much higher will my interest rate be compared to a primary resident? Probably a percent. Yeah. 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 The, well, here, here's what happened about a year ago. FHFA, they're the agency that the oversees a lot of the Fannie Mae and all that stuff. They came in and said, we're going to really get, put a whacking to the rates for second homes, investment properties, and cash out. And they did. And they, the rate, they, it's actually a two point, two point adjustment to the, to the rate. Now I didn't say, I'm, I don't mean two percentage points to the rate, but it, whatever the rate would be, it would be that rate plus two or two and a half points more. So when you factor that in, what it would be, if it, you didn't have to pay the two and a half points, it's usually about a point, point and a half higher. Uh, so that's, that's what you'd be looking at. And also, David, if you call call in or email us, I don't have to pull your credit. I can just give you a quick scenario and show you where rates are at. Yep. Cool. That's it right now, Dan. Yep. All right. By the time I say buy and link off, we it will be one hour on the button. I can't thank you guys enough. So if we could be of any help, we're, we're, let me say this. This is my new tagline. Where my goal here is to educate and inform you guys everything real estate, especially when it comes to the financing. I look like a ghost over here or something. I got I brought out this little thing to make it make it so I is can that age? Is that that age? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this thing is. It was like I'm outside and I'm like, oh man, it's gonna get dark. And then what am I gonna do? So I tried to, I tried, to, I'm not bragging, folks, but I tried to go this way. But it was too, it's too sunny out here, but I, I'm loving it out here. It's that time of year where we finally break out the pool for our 60 days of swimming and uh, Nico comes out and we just have a blast. So 
that's it for this week, guys. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Um, if we could be of any help, please check us out on the web. It's the rate update.com. Uh, our, our information is down below. We'd love to hear from you. Give us a call, send us an email. We promise uh, to get back with you and at least give you the truth. So thanks for joining us. God bless. Take care. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. See you, brother. Take it easy, man. I'll see you tomorrow.